What I have here are the first TCL Next Paper phones, the 14 Next Paper and the 14 Next Paper 5G. Both are using the same eye-friendly optimized LCD display technology we've seen in Next Paper tablets. More on that in a second. You might remember as a regular viewer of my channel, the very first video here was about the TCL Next Paper 10S, which promised nothing less than having the next generation of digital paper displays. I won't lie, I was a little disappointed that they didn't use a reflective LCD for that one, because that's what TCL initially announced with the Next Paper brand. But over time, I grew to love the Next Paper 10S and I've been basically using it as my go-to LCD tablet ever since the review. And I'll explain why when I talk about the displays of these two phones. First, let's talk about pricing and hardware. Both phones are positioned as entry-level phones and start at around 180 euros for the regular version and 250 euros for the 5G version. For that price, you get a charger and a USB-C cable in the box of the cheaper model and depending on the market, also a case and a headset. There's also an optionally available stylus with a fitting case. The more expensive 5G version only comes with the USB-C cable, charger, case, and headset are optional. I have to say the naming scheme is a bit confusing, to be honest, because despite the phones sharing the 14X paper name, the 5G version is actually quite different from the regular one. So it's not just the same phone with 5G added, but essentially a completely different product. Just so you know, I'll keep referring to the non-5G version as the regular or 4G or main variant of the phone, as I feel it's their main Next Paper product. But before talking about the Next Paper displays, let's start with the build quality. You can tell TCL is trying to give us that premium feel without the premium price tag. The body of the 14X paper is plastic, yes, but it's got a nice fiberglass back cover that mimics glass a bit at least. The one thing they could have done a little better here is the fitting of the frame and the back cover. At least on my unit, I can feel the edge of the frame when running my fingers over it. It's not compromising handling in any way, but could be better. For that reason, I actually like the 5G variant in terms of haptics a little better because the back cover stretches over the sides as one piece. It's also this textured soft touch material that feels surprisingly great in the hand. With its 6.78 inch display, the 4G version is giving you a lot of screen estate, but it's also feeling quite large with the flat sides. TCL managed to place the power button, which by the way acts as a fingerprint reader, at a decent height though, so it's not an issue to reach it. With the 6.6 inch display, the 14X paper 5G is slightly smaller, but what makes it feel much more compact is the one piece back cover with its more rounded design. So I'd say one handed usability is a bit nicer on the 5G version. Under the hood, the 14X paper runs a MediaTek Helio G88 SoC with 8 cores. You'll find that one in other budget-friendly phones like the Xiaomi Redmi 12 as well. What's especially nice is that the phone also comes with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage, of which around 227 gigs are available to use. That's pretty sweet for a budget phone if you ask me. And if that's still not enough, you also have the option to expand the storage with a micro SD card by up to two terabytes. Depending on the region, the phone is available as a dual SIM version as well, which is the one I have here. The 5G variant has a MediaTek Dimensity 6020 chipset, which also has eight cores, but that SoC only is accompanied by six gigs of RAM, which honestly is still more than enough for everyday use. The internal storage also has 256 gigs, of which around 228 gigs are available to use. And you can also expand it with a micro SD card by up to one terabyte. Geekbench 5 shows the 5G version to be quite a bit faster for CPU performance, unsurprisingly. OpenGL performance, on the other hand, is more comparable between the two phones. So just keep in mind that both are budget 
phones. So don't expect any miracles when it comes to gaming. But having said that, day-to-day -day performance is quite adequate and I actually have no complaints in that regard. With the earpiece of the 14X Paper 4G acting as a second speaker, it has a decently loud stereo speaker setup. The 5G version only comes with the bottom-sided mono speaker, which sounds fine as well, but can't compete with the fuller stereo sound of its sibling, obviously. And last but not least, an honorary mention goes to the headphones jack that's available on both phones. Now onto the displays. This is where things get interesting. T-Sales promise is for the next paper technology to reduce blue light emissions, which I don't have a spectrometer to confirm, but they got the TIFF random certification to prove it's true. On its own, that's nice, sure, but not really that impressive because you can reduce blue light with essentially any phone at this point by enabling some sort of eye comfort mode. But with those, the screen turns yellow, orange, or red and is changing the color composition of the content. You can also do that on a software level on the TCL 40 Next Paper phones as well. But the blue light reduction TCL managed to implement is done on a hardware level. It's all very technical, but according to TCL, they keep the blue light in the 457 to 462.5 nanometer band which results in a reduction of up to 61% of harmful blue light emissions in the lower nanometer range. So by not eliminating blue light completely, but essentially shifting it, T-cell manages to maintain color accuracy. And while that all sounds pretty impressive, it's actually not the most important unique selling point of these two phones, in my opinion. The real USP is the Nano Edge front glass. TCL says it's reducing reflections by up to 90%, which creates this incredibly matte finish, which results in the front glass not having any mirror-like reflections, resulting in a much more relaxed viewing experience than with a normal LCD screen. That's also what drove me towards using the TCL Next Paper 10S more and more over time. With regular phones like my Samsung Galaxy S22 here, even in a regularly lit room, you have those reflections from other light sources on the screen. And you really only notice how annoying those reflections actually are once you start using something like this. There's still a subtle glare from outside light sources, but it's nowhere near as pronounced as with other screens. Very, very far from it actually. The only drawback I can see are the reduced contrast levels compared to a regular LCD. But compared to an e-ink screen, they are still much better. So I'm actually fine with the trade-off. The next paper screen has this softness to it that's actually hard to describe. And it's also not easy to capture on camera. But all of this essentially translates to both phones offering a much better viewing experience than you'd expect, especially at that price point. Oh, and I almost forgot the fingerprint situation. With the matte screen, both phones aren't completely immune to smudges on the screen, but it's much subtler than on a regular screen, adding to the paper-like feeling TCL tries to push with the next paper brand. But as I mentioned, there are quite a few differences in both versions of the 40 next paper phones and the screen is one of those. The main variant not only has the larger 6.78 inch display versus 6.6 .6 inches on the 5G version, but also a punch hole camera instead of a notch. Both are fine, but the punch hole definitely feels more modern as most phones have moved from the notch at this point. The chin and the top bezel on the regular 14 next paper are also ever so slightly smaller, adding to the more modern look and feel. But more importantly, the screen's resolution on the 4G version is noticeably higher. With green at 96 ppi, it's crisp and looks awesome. The 5G version only has 269 ppi, which you can notice when holding the phone a bit closer. It's not like you notice the pixels all that much, but because of the anti-clear front glass, it's a difference you can actually see under regular viewing conditions, especially with small text. 
So personally, for that reason alone, I'd always go for the main variant without 5G. The screen simply looks better. Both phones have 90 Hz displays, which can be switched to 60 Hz in general or an automated adaption based on the content. Personally, I have been using the phones with 90 Hz setting as I felt it gave me the best and smoothest experience most consistently. With 450 nits, the maximum brightness on the 4G model and 500 nits on the 5G model, you'd think that's a bit on the lower end for outside use. But thanks to the matte finish of the screen, outdoor visibility is surprisingly good. But obviously, there's still a limit to what the front glass finish can compensate for. So don't expect ink-like performance under direct sunlight. Both phones run Android 13 with a custom TCL skin, which is very close to stock Android, but brings a couple of smaller changes. For example, pulling down on the home screen will bring up this screen of the last app shortcuts and the newsfeed, which you can disable in the settings. There's also a bit of bloatware on both phones, which luckily can be easily removed if you don't need those apps. You have the option to switch to special viewing modes, which try to replicate the viewing experience you'd get on an e-ink screen. One is the ink paper mode, the other one the color paper mode. While I can see the appeal of the ink paper mode, switching to a purely grayscale view, the color paper mode essentially tries to mimic an e-ink Kaleido screen with its muted colors. I honestly don't see the point for that one because that color rendition isn't a feature of Ian Kaledo, but a limitation, which the next paper LCD screens luckily don't have. You get a 50 megapixels main camera, a 5 megapixels ultra wide camera, 2 megapixels macro camera, and a 32 megapixels front facing camera on the 4G version. The 5G version is missing the ultra wide camera, but has an additional depth camera and the front facing camera only has eight megapixels. Performance on both is what you'd expect at that price range with the 4G model having the upper hand quality wise and both giving you a couple of useful options in the camera apps like switching to a full 50 megapixels capture instead of the 12.5 megapixels default setting. With 5000 milliamps and 5010 milliamps, both phones have similar battery sizes, which easily lasted long enough to get me through a normal day of use on both. And with 33 watts wire charging, the 4G version is also reasonably fast to charge. The 5G version is slower with 15 watts though. All in all, the TCL 14 Next Paper and the TCL 14 Next Paper 5G are solid contenders in the budget-friendly market. They bring something very different to the table with the displays, which I think is a great unique selling point that's actually worth exploring. Between those two, I'd recommend the regular 4G version to pretty much anyone. The 5G version is obviously without alternatives if you really need the 5G connection and still want to get the next paper screen. But the regular 4G next paper feels like the much more well-rounded package that is simply better in almost all other aspects. So who should get one of these? If you're on a budget, care about your screen time affecting your eyes, or find the glare on other phones annoying or uncomfortable, and you want a phone that can handle the day-to-day -day without all the bells and whistles of more expensive high-end devices, the 14 next paper is definitely worth considering. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this review helpful, and see you in the next one.